what it is, what it isn't. Looking for a better way to get up out of bed instead of getting on the internet and checking a new hit me get up. First shot, come strut walking. A little bit of humble, a little bit of cautious. Somewhere between like Rocky and Cosby's for the game. Nope, nope, we all can't copy up. Glad, moonwalking. And this here is our party. My posse's been on Broadway, and we did it all way. Chrome music. I shed my skin and put my bones into everything I record to it. And yet I'm on. Let that stage light go and shine on down. Got that Bob Barker suit game and Plinko in my style. Money, stay on my... My name's Zach Stubbley Cook. I'm a current member of the Australian swim team. I'm currently studying Griffith at Griffith University at Nathan and Macravat, studying a Bachelor of Business and Psychology, hopefully majoring in HR or something along those lines. Um, very interested in the space of organisational psychology and how to be kind of more efficient in the workplace and streamline workplace and also um, workplace relations as well between staff members in the sense of hierarchy. So I'm quite interested in that space on how we can actually better utilise that space. Um, so that's what I'm interested in outside of swimming. Um, I'm currently ranked fourth in the world for my event, the 200 metres breaststroke. Uh, last year, no major championships this year. So um, that's that's that. Uh, and I'm currently working for the Australian Olympic Committee in an admin role, working in community engagement, which has been really rewarding. Nice. Sounds like you're covering lots of bases at the moment, mate. <laughs> but also, yeah, trying to yeah, doing a lot of your, your academic studies as well. And of course, at the moment, being COVID nineteen and the whole isolation thing and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's yeah, it's one of those ones where it's been a lot of downtime. So how have you gone ahead and, and sort of adapted what you do to make sure you're still looking after your intellectual wellness? So what sort of changes have you had to make? A fair, a fair few. Um, put put a bit of backstory behind it. Um, the day, so there was this one day. It was about a week after census date. So um, that week. The day, the day that everything got cancelled, I was actually went for a swim by myself because like, we, we got told we won't have a session in the afternoon. Go for a swim by yourself when you can. I wanted to get it done in the middle of the day, just get it done so I could have the whole afternoon. I got in the pool. By the time I'd gotten out, I'd had like four or five emails from Swimming Australia saying all high-performance high programs have been cancelled until further notice. And um, then an, an, a second email from the AOC saying that the Australian government will not approve um, Australians to travel, even athletes, to the Olympics in 2020. So it was a, it was hard in that sense. And then because I had missed census data, I actually couldn't really get back in to uni. Like, and as well, I was six weeks behind. I was like, you know, it's it's uh, difficult because you know, like, what do I do there? Um, do I try and catch up and stretch myself to do that? Or do I just go, okay, I'm going to use this time to better myself and, you know, work on myself and reflect a bit more. And I definitely did the latter of reflecting a lot more. And um, I've had the benefit of being able to have a job, first of all, which has been amazing because I've had, I've, I've gotten work that I wouldn't have gotten to do in the admin role. Um, meaning that, like I've started to work in the indigenous space for my boss and doing little projects for him, which has been really, really rewarding. So doing a lot of research around Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and their needs in terms of education, secondary education, how to get them into tertiary education and um, what it looks like for their integration to the workplace um, has been really, really rewarding. Um, and then, I've also like had through work as well, like had the opportunity to upskill. So doing things like cultural awareness training um, as part of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander stuff. Um, and I've also started to do like Excel courses, which I like, I'm like, I've never had time to do. I'm just like, it's really like, I'm like really good skill to have, but it's like always just like trial and error normally. And now it's like, okay, I've got, I've got a bit of time to knuckle down and actually do this. Um, yeah, those are the things I've had to like adjust and kind of keep myself busy with. And it's been an emotional journey to say the least. And I think it would be for everyone of the up and down of this like roller coaster of COVID-19, being angry, being sad, being all of a sudden motivated to go, yeah, I'm going to like go for a run today for like three hours or, you know, just like 
you you have to ride the roller coaster as well and I've, I've definitely taken a bit more time and taken a step back for me as well um which has been really important so like what i've adjusted with i guess overall is like my psych and i call it he calls it seeds so your social side your exercise your education diet and your sleep so like obviously the exercise and the so uh the exercise is easy to get because i'm doing gym doing um what bike ergo stuff and aerobic circuits the social side is a little bit more difficult um but we're lucky we have social media to interact with other people and then the education was obviously with census state i was like okay well, what can i do and i think i kind of looked at as you said intellectual wellness isn't this like as i read what you said about intellectual wellness you kind of said you know it's just stimulating and not necessarily like your ability to learn and your ability to use your brain so i think like we often would probably just view that as education but i think me at this time has gone you know that's not just education like reading more and taking a more in-depth look at xyz and you know like say like the ais offered a bunch of courses and i've signed up to like pretty much all of them um just like financial four week courses and personal brand courses and those kind of things as well. So taking opportunities that I'd probably normally be like, Oh no, I'll just let it, let it slide. Um, and actually like using my brain to keep that rolling. Cause I'm definitely a person that overthinks if I'm left with too much time. Um, and then diet and sleep obviously is maintaining a routine of that as well. There's been the main adjustment as well. Oh, hey, it definitely sounds like you've been keeping nice and busy and taking the most of all of those opportunities. That sounds Sounds pretty incredible. And you did touch on it too, saying the importance of it, but can you go into a little bit more detail as to why you believe that in looking after your intellectual wellness is so important for your overall personal well-being? I guess from an athlete's point of view, to put my athlete hat on, is like I'm a big believer you're a person before you're an athlete. Um, you, you, you'll swim, run, play football, whatever, for probably 10 years, if that of your life professionally and then what are you going to do for the next 60 so that's the blunt and honest truth of it like and you can't you can't think of it too much like that when you're in there but you got to keep that on the back burner i guess um like put put 100 percent into what you're doing but always remember that you will have to do or you'll have to do something afterwards to a fill in your time and b keep yourself motivated and stimulated because if you're in a high performance sport environment or a high performance environment in general and anything you are constantly pushed and you're constantly like at this level where you're trying to achieve more and more you're also like always driven by a goal and normally an end goal of a performance at a sport a sporting event or a performance on a weekend or you know like a orchestra performance those kind of things like you know um so I guess like you need to find that in, for me, in all aspects of your life, I guess. And like, as I said, like education and that aspect of it is for me just as important as my social aspect or my exercise aspect. Like I have my own personal goals, as I said at the start, which are probably a little bit more clearer than my current sporting goals, you know, like, and things will like I kind of think of it as well as like a bit of a, like a bar, like a pie chart. Imagine if you had a pie chart and you had exercise, like sport or whatever you love, you know, you had your education, you had all of the different pieces and at different points in time, those different pieces will take up more or less of your day, I guess is the bit is my best way. Like sleep and diet probably maintain themselves as probably take up a quarter and then the rest is, you know, filling in the rest. Yeah, absolutely. It really sounds like what you're focusing on is just getting that right balance between everything that you're doing. And that's actually a big thing that we talk about here on our camps with students is making sure that they get that balance right. And for yourself as an elite athlete and a university student and the rest of everything else going on in your life, as you've mentioned, which is a phenomenal achievement, what other things do you do to be able to balance all the priorities in your life? Uh in terms of balance, like I guess the schedule, as simple as it sounds, like everyone goes, oh yeah, I'm good at time management. 
but sticking to the schedule. Like, you know, you can, anyone can put it together a Google calendar or an Excel spreadsheet of what they're going to do for the day, but actually sticking to it and, you know, maintaining it. And I'm, I think like we're, we're very lucky that we live in the day and age that like we can, like, for, for example, like I have an app, I think it's called like time page, which is just a calendar app. And it's like, it's a subscription, but it's, it's not a plug at all here either. <laughs> it's great because like, it'll remind you that you've got this one, this on. It'll also say, okay, you've got this much spare time today. And you'll be like, oh, okay. So like, you know, when you actually like take a step back and go, these are the things I've got to do. These are the times I've allocated for that. I've actually got this spare time between 11 and 12, you know, and using that time, effectively whether that is just having a rest and just having a coffee and having a downtime or whether that is goes okay i want to do this so how do i start doing that what are the steps um but i definitely have fallen into the trap and i think this is probably some good advice that i've learned along the way and whether people listen to it or not is another story but one of the things i fell into i think probably coming out of high school was solely focusing on one thing um and yeah <laughs> i guess if you probably if anyone has a google of me looking back at commonwealth games um it wasn't my best performance and it was probably the point where i was just focusing on swimming um i came 10th and then swam three months later a time that would have won so like i had no difference in ability at all really I was swimming the same times roughly in training. It was just purely because I didn't have my balance and that was reflected in my performance then. Um, so like, yeah, that, that just highlights to me how important balancing is. And honestly, keeping busy is because I find I'm, a, I'm the type of person that overanalyzes everything. And if I'm not busy, I'll do that rather than drawing a line in the sand and moving on. Um, so yeah, like me, a balanced, busy lifestyle is what I like to be. Absolutely. And like you're saying, in terms of being able to focus on different things and having that balance between them all, because that's, that's another thing that we often do speak about is encouraging students to choose wisely the things that they focus on and choosing to control the things they can control to avoid distractions and all, all the things that go along with that. So for yourself too, what key things do you actually focus on to be able to perform at your best? In terms of like when I'm racing or like generally or? I'd say both. Yeah, definitely. Both in terms of keeping that balance between everything that you're talking about, but also on race day, what are the things that you do to get yourself in the zone? Um, probably the, like race day is the easiest and racing in general is probably the easiest to describe is definitely like probably my main priority when I'm racing is making sure I'm keeping time to just um, relax not necessarily relax in the sense that okay I'm gonna have like a sleep or you know rest up it's like relax mind and body so like reading a book distracting myself by doing that um, or what I've utilized a lot is actually um, going for a walk like so typically we're in a village or around a hotel in a foreign country um at a world championships event style uh and just going for a walk around the hotel like it might be boring might be like say like korea wasn't very interesting like there wasn't much around but actually removing myself from the environment or the bubble as a lot of people like to call it of this energy um definitely helped um and really focusing on that is my priority when I'm racing and then just focusing on my processes is the next thing. And that's, yeah, like an emphasis of my processes is, is definitely like happens in training and then you kind of just let it happen and forget. Um, that's typical race day kind of mentality mentally. Um, day to day and like that balancing of life is... I think like I'm still working on it. Like I don't want to say I'm perfect at it by any means. And I don't think like, you know, if you, I think if you think you're perfect at it, like go have a look at some people that like, you know, like 
I was listening to a podcast yesterday, it would have been, and he was talking, Joe Rogan was talking about like, he was like, oh, I, whenever I feel lazy, uh, whenever I feel like I'm doing a lot, I go look at this guy and he's like an engine, he's a, he's a surgical engineer. He's one of the best um, ultra marathon runners in the world. And he like runs his own um, side business and a podcast on the side. It's like, you know, you, when you think you're busy, you, you like look to those people and you go, you know, I'm, I'm not that busy. Like I can do more. Um, and always refining and always reflecting on that. I can't remember what it is now, like off the top of my head, but I, I got told recently actually, which I found really helpful was to look at your week. You go, okay, I've got, I think it's 156 hours, something like that is your weekly total hours. And then you, you knock out the big things, you knock out sleep and all that. And then you actually go, okay, I've actually got like three, four hours a day for five days a week where I can't account what I'm actually doing. And you don't have to like describe that to that time. You can go, okay, that's family time or that's TV time, you know, but actually kind of reflecting is definitely part of what I do in my life. If that kind of makes sense reflecting to an extent and then making sure I'm drawing a line in the sand and kind of letting everything wash over as well. Does that kind of answer it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Love to ask you a bit more about your reflection. You're saying you're reflecting on things. How do you reflect on things? What are the things you think about? How do you go about it? Um, there's a couple of things I do. Normally I'll write a few notes in a book. Um, so training, so in a training sphere, it'll be a good, better how after sessions. So just simply like, what was good? What could I do better? And how could I do that better? Um, it's just three simple things, quick, easy, takes like five minutes, um, if that. And then often, like I'll write, I just have a notebook that is just like a general notebook about everything, meetings, everything. And I'll just like, we'll jot a few notes down about the day sometimes, you know, oh, this is pretty crap, you know, oh, this is good, you know, like, and actually verbalizing it and recognizing it for me takes the power away. Like, you know, you have this thing that's like you're a bit anxious about or you're feeling pretty crap about, like if you write it down or you like say it aloud, it's, it takes its power away over you because you all of a sudden you've gone, you know, Oh, it's actually not that bad. You know, like, and then I've actually, probably since last year, not every day, but a lot of days I've meditated. So like breathing meditation has helped a lot. Um, so like I went through after com games was a lot of mental struggle as well. Like a bit of a, to get back into swimming and to get back to where I thought I could be in, in a confident state of mind. Um, and probably still, if I'm honest, still working on it, I still have bad days um, as everyone does. Um, but like the meditation stuff helps a lot. Like, you know, after a workout, when your body's feeling drained, just centering yourself again and just letting all the emotions of training or of school or of class just wash over you kind of is the way they describe it. And it sounds all airy fairy, but for anyone that has tried it, they know exactly what that feeling is. It's like, it's like you, you breathe in. And you, you focus on what you are feeling and then you, you're you quite aware of where that feeling is in your body. So say if I'm, like, I'm anxious, I often feel it in tops of my shoulders and like like a tightness in my chest. Um, and I'll like breathe into that feeling and it will just like, it's like, it sounds weird, but it just like washes over. So that's definitely something that I've, you know, worked on to like, yeah to keep mentally fresh, I guess, as well. Yeah, those, those are the, probably two things that I do to reflect on the day. And definitely um, one other thing would be like normalizing it. So like, I think my partner, which I'm very grateful for, has helped me to open up in the sense that she she's very open about her emotions. And I'm normally a person that uh, blacks the emotions out. So um yeah like it's really helped me to open up and actually normalize to talk about those emotional things whether they are happy or sad you know like oh i really enjoyed that or 
you know, and it's like, why and how are you feeling about that? You know, those kind of things, like you don't often have those conversations and it's a bit like deep and, and but it is nice to just sit and have those conversations and skate almost like we do schedule it in once a week. We have a coffee and just, just talk for an hour, hour and a half, just about whatever. So yeah, like those three things are probably the things I do to kind of reflect yeah, nice. I really like what you were saying about focusing on being aware of those things. Like it just made me think, it goes back to that old adage of you can control what you're aware of, but what you're not aware of controls you. I think that's a really, mm. really good point that you've made there too. Now, I'd love to yeah, ask exactly. you this too about... Sorry. Yeah. No, no, you go. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask you this question because obviously now we're starting to come out of the isolation period and hopefully starting to go back to some form of new normality or whatever that's going to look like and now you're starting to get back into your training and all those sorts of things so is there anything that you're going to change now from what you've learned during this period um i think well i think one of the things i've learned is what's important to me i think um but ensuring that i am living the balanced life and ensuring I am taking the time to see people as well. Um, I think like eight weeks apart from other people has really like made me crave some social socialization. Um, so definitely like taking the opportunity when I have it to see friends and family. Um, and that that's probably like one of the main things I think like seizing the opportunity that I have now as well. Um, which I think is still part of my like frustration of the whole situation. Um, like it stems from it in the sense that like, I think I'm still frustrated that like everything that happened, like everything kind of like that you're working towards for the last eight months plus has just like been ripped away in the matter of an hour. Like, you know, so I think like seizing the opportunity that I have now and giving the hundred percent that I have now, because the opportunity that I have now may never come around or it will never come around again. Like that's just a fact. And I think seizing each day is definitely um, like, yeah, a priority of mine. Like I've always loved the saying seize the day and live life to the fullest, but I don't think I've ever fully appreciated it until now if that makes sense yeah definitely so those are the things but like obviously then we've got like our own um our own goals in terms of like being an elite athlete and performance wise um that like we've reviewed and like those kind of things as well so they've i think i've thought about that and how i can better utilize my training time and those kind of things as well but they're a bit like nitty gritty kind of stuff. So, yeah. No, nah, fair call. And some absolute words of wisdom coming out of that. It seems like you've taken a lot out of this period, which is pretty cool. And just to, to yeah. finish off with, have you got any, any final tips? You've covered an enormous amount of amazing bits of advice so far, but any other final tips for our students in terms of them looking after their personal well-being as a whole? I would do the weekly thing like it's it's amazing to see like so write down i'll have to i'll have to find it but like if you just find out how many hours are in the week so i think it's like 156 or something something like along those lines um and then you break it down so you go like eight hours of sleep a night so what's that so uh, six times yeah can't can't do maths anymore <laughs> i'm not studying maths anymore um yeah so you, then you just break that down so you're doing yeah so you, you then have like a hundred hours left and then they'll be spending six, 30, 30 hours a week at school. So you've got 70 hours left and then you break, keep breaking it down until you go, okay, you know, this is what my day typically looks like. And then finding value in that. So, you know, it, I think like some people hate, they hate me saying this at like sporting talks, but like I go, you know, if you don't value it, why bother? Like if you don't find value and fulfillment in what you're doing, like, yeah, you, you, okay. You might value money and you might be doing the job to, 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 to like 
to be paid lots of money, right? And yes, that fulfills a value, but it is, do you value your money more than you value your well-being? So finding that balance of what you value and kind of really reflecting, which is difficult to begin with, but once, once you get going in a r- routine of it, like you find your values pretty quick and you start, re- like you start catching yourself doing things that you don't really enjoy, like you thought you enjoyed doing, but they don't align with your values. So aligning that schedule or balanced lifestyle of a pie chart or weekly breakdown of hours with your values is really important, I think. And I think that's like a really, like the breakdown of your week or the pie chart is quite a simple visual representation of your lifestyle as well that you can easily then, you know, go to your coach or go to this person and go, you know, this is what I value now. Like, can we discuss this? What do you think? Um, Where do you stand with this? Do you think like getting other people's opinion, but at the end of the day, it is your life and your values and your beliefs that that's that. And yeah, like I think we often like people often get caught up in like living other people's lives. Like they think this is all glory and they think that's how they want to live. But really if they do get there or if they get close, they, they don't find value in it. And I think I've seen that quite often, like going to a private school as well. Like a lot of kids follow their parents and it's not necessarily what they want to do. And that sounds very cliche, but you know, I think the world change, the world is changing and like be adaptable, but find your values and follow those values because that's, that's the right path you're on. And the other other thing I would say is definitely like find what you're passionate about, go out and try new things. Like it's never too late to go try new things. Like my partner's dad, he started Brazilian Jiu Jitsu when he was like 45, 50 and loved it. Now he's near, he's 63 now. And he's like, he's got nearly hopefully gets his black belt at the end of this year. So, you know, like find your passion and find what you love and keep doing those things. Nice. There's some awesome words of wisdom to finish off with there, Zach. Thanks so much, mate. I really, really do appreciate your time and some fantastic advice that you've given us as well. All the best for this next little period and getting back into the training and leading up to whenever our, your next meets might be, hopefully not too far away, but mate, we will be, watching closely and supporting from behind the scenes. Again, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you for having me.